uh, which dream will um, prevail in America? Uh, will it be the American dream uh, or, or Obama's dream? Now, the American dream is, is a dream that goes back a couple of hundred years when a bunch of guys got together in Philadelphia and they came upon a, a formula, a recipe, for a new kind of country. Uh, the American founders believed that if this recipe were adopted, uh, this new country would become, over time, uh, the strongest, uh, the most successful, uh, the most prosperous country on the planet. Uh, and so it has been. Here we are, America, and we are on top of the world. And the idea that America is based on a unique formula, this notion is called American exceptionalism. By the way, in 2009, uh, President Obama was asked, do you believe uh, in American exceptionalism? Uh, he gave a very odd answer. He said, I believe in American exceptionalism. But then he added this, uh, just as the Brits believe in British exceptionalism and the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism. So what Obama was saying, the, the plain meaning, is if everyone believes they are exceptional, then clearly no one really is. But it's, it's kind of worth us stepping back for a moment and asking what is exceptional about America. I want to mention a couple of things very briefly. Well, first of all, as I look into the audience, a very diverse audience, and I think, what would happen if you were to come to my native country of India? What if you lived there, worked there, stayed for many years, maybe even took Indian citizenship? Could you actually become Indian? No. Why not? Because to be Indian, you need two things, brown skin and Indian parents. Um, being Indian is a function of birth and blood. Uh, and so it is in most countries in the world. But in America, no. Uh, in America, the Irish, the Italians, the Jews, and today the, the Koreans, the West Indians, you can come here and it sometimes takes a couple of generations, but you can, in fact, become American. You become American by assimilating uh, to a way of life, uh, to a constitution and a, and a rule of law. That's one aspect of American uh, exceptionalism. Uh, here's another, by the way. America is a country founded on entrepreneurship, on trade, on business. And to say this is somewhat to say something that may seem sort of pedestrian, but historically, the entrepreneur, the merchant, the trader have in almost every culture been reviled, been looked down upon. Uh, Confucius says that the noble man knows what is virtuous, but the low man knows what is profitable. Uh, in India, by the way, we have the caste system. Who's at the top? The Brahmin, the priest then the aristocrat, then the warrior, and down the list you go until right from the bottom, one step above the hated untouchable, is the merchant, the, the trader. Even in Europe, by the way, even today, inherited money is better than earned money. Why? Because inherited money is innocent. It fell out of the sky. If you earned it, the assumption is you probably had to ran run over some guys to get it. So there's a prejudice against the nouveau riche, against earned wealth. What I'm trying to say is that historically there's a totem pole, and the businessman, the entrepreneur, is at the bottom. But the American founders took that totem pole and flipped it and put the entrepreneur at center stage. For me, the American dream is not merely a dream of economic opportunity. There is economic opportunity in America, and what is remarkable to me is how well ordinary citizens have it in America. By the way, I've got an acquaintance in India who has been trying to emigrate to this country for, it seems, a decade now. The poor guy never seems to get a visa. So finally, I say to him, I say, hey, why are you so eager to come to America? He goes, Dinesh, I just want to move to a country where the poor people are fat. So, um, 
so yes, there is a, there's a material allure to America. But when I think of my own life, what has mattered most to me in coming to America is that here is a country where I get to write the script of my own life. Uh, here is a country where my destiny isn't given to me, it's constructed by me. Uh, here is a country where my life is more like a blank sheet of paper and I am the artist. I think this is why young people around the world are magnetically drawn to America because America represents the self-directed life. This is the core of the American dream. And then we have on the other side of it a different dream, and this is indeed Obama's dream. Now, before we get into Obama's dream, I do want to point out that there is a common view, even among conservatives, even among Republicans, that the problem with Obama is that he is a bungler. He is an amateur in the title of a recent book. He, he tries to do X, but he gets Y. And this has produced a whole set of conservative punditry essentially lecturing Obama on things like Obama. Don't you realize that confiscatory taxation does not produce economic growth? Oh, Obama, don't you realize that by blocking oil drilling in America, you aren't going to create jobs? Oh, Obama, may we advise you that uh, the Assad, the dictator of Syria, or the mullahs in Iran are not our friends. Obama, you should wake up to the fact that if we slash our own nuclear weapons, this will not inspire the Iranians to do the same. <laughs> 